Now, Matthew, a lot of people switch to the Mac because sort of by reputation, it's so easy to use. Everything is supposed to be intuitive and you just figure it out. But if you want to use it as a developer, it can be kind of hard. Well, there's a lot to setting it up, configuring it, tuning it the way you want it. And in fact, there's layers to that. Yeah. There's the, oh, I'll set the background to my terminal to be a different color. Yeah, yeah most kinda people can kind of hack through that. There's the, I would like my caps locks to behave as a different key. Yeah. That's a different yeah, level Somebody there. might need to tell you where to find that setting. I'd like to change the shell out from Bash to something a little bit more powerful. Yeah. How do I even go about that? Or maybe entirely new add-on programs like iTerm or plugins like Oh My Z Shell. These are core developer productivity tools. Some people know about, some people don't. You and I talk with developers all the time that are that, that, that just don't know that these tools are there. You know, and I also want to really encourage people to find opportunities to keep their hands on the keyboard more. That's a, yes. a very simple one, and you think, oh my goodness, dismissively, how easy is it is to just keep my fingers on the keyboard, but knowing shortcuts, adding new ones, customizing ones that were already there, building out ones that control things that are typically not part of the OS, like window arrangement and layout and splitting those up. Those things that are typically reach for the trackpad or the mouse mm -hmm. when you put them on the keyboard are a big deal. And then once you've made all these customizations and configurations, of course you got a backup, you got a time machine drive, sure. but how can you collaborate around that configuration? How can you take all that and as really as, you know, as real developer power tool, push that into a GitHub repo and use tooling to, to keep those changes controlled and collaborate on the configuration of your system with other people. Well, if someone discovers an interesting setting or does the hard work of automating an install of one of these tools, it's kind of sad that it'd only be for their machine. So when you gave this idea of kind of wrapping it up into something, that is boxing that we talk about towards the end of the class. Absolutely. Taking all of these settings, if I invest the effort and figure out how to automate one tool, install a new one, put it into a repo, and then... Then run a tool and have that stuff happen. Now, all this stuff is possible, but it's not obvious. Uh, some of those settings you might discover on your own, you might Google for them, some you might not even think to Google for. So we've collected a bunch of this information and distilled it down into a bunch of helpful demos and some discussion about the reasons behind these things and the how, um, and we'd love for you to check this out. I think a lot of these things are just going to literally give you seconds back each time you implement them and cumulatively give you minutes back of every day. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. joining us.